Bird, 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 bird. Feeling, I'm feeling spry. Hey, everybody. It's Ron Bain with the Honey Dog Podcast. It is the 6th of November. Now, I've said it before, and I know some of you still skip, but there's a couple announcements. I'll do them. I'll do them in the beginning so you don't have to wait and wait. I am going to always thank my Patreon patrons first. You know what that means. You join Patreon. Look up. P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and you join the Hunting Dog Podcast, whatever level you want to, and you get all kinds of fun shit. And I'm going to be sending, I'm going to be sending my patrons a whole bunch of clips from the Mississippi River and from South Dakota, just little little short clips. I'm not going to have a Zoom room for a couple of weeks, so I thought, why not just give them a little piece of the hunting action, even though a lot of them, not a lot of them, a, a few of them are going to be out in South Dakota with me hunting. That's going to be so much fun. But here's the announcements. Hunting Dog Podcast store is back open. I get every once in a while someone says, how come you don't have the t-shirts anymore? How come?" So I put my two daughters in charge. Kelsey's the designer, and Jesse's the organizer and the manager. And they have got t-shirts, coffee mugs, hats. You can go to the Hunting Dog Podcast website, hit the store drop down. That'll take you to the store, and you can start. We're going to be adding a whole bunch of stuff. Um, even buff naked, na- buff naked, bu- bu- buck naked. Now that's great, Ron. You, you're you're so professional. Buff neck gaiters in orange. Yeah, when it's a little cold out there, I'll have some with me in South Dakota. Uh, buff naked. Na- I can't I can't get past it. So what? It's my show. It's my intro, and you have to listen to it. All right, you don't. You can skip, but you're going to miss the next announcement. Okay. So anyway, the Hunting Dog Podcast store is open. Go to the Hunting Dog Podcast website, or you can find it in the links in my bio on Instagram, and you can get yourself a little blingy from decals to coffee cups to hats to shirts to hoodies to long sleeve t shirts, different colors, different genders. I, we got it all, we got it covered. So that's exciting. The other thing exciting is Pike Gear, my title sponsor. Everybody knows they make technical clothing for the Upland Hunter. Did you know that they just came out with a raincoat? And did you know that they put out the Dakota pants in green? And I'm sorry, but I like green. I like green more than gray. Now, I wear pike pants. I wear them for chore pants, you know. They're comfortable. But I like them in green. For some reason, I'm old school. I like green. Hunting pants should be brown or green. And they came out in green. And the raincoat came out. So that and... They have a contest going on where you can win some money. If you take good pictures or even, well, hell, with an with a iPhone or an Android now, anybody can take a good picture. And they have an image in Upland Photo Contest. So go to Pike Gear, go to pikegear.com and look for their image in Upland Photo Contest. You can read all the rules. I'm not going to read them to you. My, my interests are long enough, as we all know. But go to Pike Gear. And you can figure out how to do it. You got to hashtag this, hashtag that, copy this, all that. Yeah, I, who cares? But that's going to be fun. I'm gonna, and I get to pick. I'm not the final choice. The the final. Ch- I'm not. I, I've already done this intro like five times. I am not the judge, jury, and executioner. But I am on the panel. I will be picking, or I'll be helping to pick the winners of that photo contest. So get your good photos. Go to Pike Gear and enter your photos. That's going to be fun. I don't know. I don't know if if you just crawled out from under a rock, but if you haven't put Onyx on your phone, I mean, mine's been on it for years. I don't know what you're waiting for. You're, you're probably if, in fact, if you don't have Onyx on your phone, you really don't do a lot of hunting. You just you, you go to the same old places. And you don't need it. I get it. But if you, tra- especially if you travel or you want to find a new spot in your state, go to Onyx and. Clicking on that, you can use our promo code, HTB20. If you're a Patreon patron, you call me. I can take care of you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Patreon patrons? Right? But, you know, and if you don't have Onyx, you, you probably also don't shoot Boss Shot Shells. Because Boss Shot Shells are, I mean to tell you, 
I don't run into anybody who doesn't have some in their truck because they are not only the probably, I'm going to say the least expensive, highest quality non-tox shot shells, copper plated. Nobody else has copper plated bismuth but Boss. My truck is loaded down with them. I'm bringing 20 gauge, 16 gauge, and, and 12 gauge 3.5s out on the, on the Mississippi River. I'm, that's all I'm shooting. And, and that's all I'm shooting forever. I, 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 there's, I don't shoot that many birds that I can't, not sh- that I can't shoot non-tox. And, uh, but I get it. You know, if you don't have Onyx, you probably don't have Boss. You probably, don't use, you probably go to the store for your spices and, instead of going to Walton's, who has everything but the meat. We just put up a spice rack on the back of our pantry room door, and I put all my Walton spices there. It was kind of like, hmm, what am I going to make tonight? Go to Walton's and see what they've got. It, you'll feel like a damn chef. You'll feel. I'm, I'm going to bring my my uh, vacuum sealer. They got a they got a small like uh, everything's portable. You know, it, it's no matter how much you can pick up. But they got this great small vacuum sealer, and I've got a long trip, so I'm going to be vac sealing my ducks. I'm going to be vac sealing my pheasants, my sharp tails. I, I'm taking that with me. Go go check it out. And Gunner Kennels, there's. There's nothing. I I can tell you this about Gunner Kennels. We just did a hunting dog podcast trivia, and I had uh, Lee on from Boss Ammo. I had Luke and Addison, the owner of Gunner Kennels, and I had I had Patrick and Rayhan up my my connections at Garmin. So the last you'll get this episode in about a week from now. The hunting dog podcast trivia sponsors game, right? And so we had Boss Shot Shells against Gunner, against Garmin, and we had five, six players on there. And uh, wait to hear that one. That, that one's a hoot. And uh, I will tell you why Gunner Kennels is the best kennel in the world. Because Addison has been so busy for the last six, seven years making kennels and improving things and making, making the safest kennel, best kennel that you can make. That he got the worst score in trivia. Yep, he, he did. I think he got one right, one out of ten. But it was funny. I can't wait for you to hear that episode. And you know, speaking of Garmin, they did better in the trivia. But what they do much better at is making us equipment to track and train our dogs to give us the peace of mind when we're hunting, and the and the quality we need when we're training our dogs. That's why we got Garmin, and that's why you go to W to buy your Garmin. You, you can go to W Hunting Supply, and you can buy a lot of things. But you know what? You When you go there, get your Garmin from W Hunting Supply because they even have, like, if you're – I know they have stories on their website that if people have been out either bear hunting or pheasant hunting or duck hunting and they lost their transmitter or the dog lost the collar or something, they will get that to you next day. They'll get it to you in six hours. That, that's I'm kidding. But – they take it seriously because they they hunt. They understand how that one little piece of equipment, we could lose our whistle and get by. We could, you know, bring an extra shotgun with us. But we all don't bring an extra Garmin transmitter and collar. And they know how important it is. And that's the kind of service you get from W. Deck drawer systems, well, that's just that just speaks for itself. It's the best thing that has ever been made for a, for a hunting truck, ever. I've already got mine loaded. I got my Weatherby shotguns in there. I've got my I got some of my old favorite antique shotguns in there, all in one drawer. The other drawer has got my dog first aid kit, toolbox, extra clothes, extra gloves. I'm an extra guy. Like I just bought my gloves for for winter out in South Dakota. I go to the gas station and get these neoprene winter insulated gloves. They fit like they fit like a condom. And they're comfortable and they're warm. I don't buy one pair. I buy three. I put one in the right deck drawer. I put another one in the left deck drawer. And I put another one in my console in my truck. I love the deck drawer system because you can put whatever you want in it. I'm not like a little gear and bag guy. They have gear bags and stuff. I just like to pull that drawer out, shuffle through it, and go, yep, there's my dog bell. Yep, there's my transmitter. Yep, there's my everything. Everything you need can fit in there. Everything, and and, and you don't have to. Well, if you're a real dog person, there's it's no it's never seasonal. It's it's always in there. 
My pro plan is not in my deck drawer system, but it is in my gunner kennel food crate where it stays fresh as a daisy, and my dogs love it. What else did they love? Now, Zara, my, my five-year-old female, all of a sudden she just started getting kind of she was, you know, vomiting a little bit and, and eating her own. You know how dogs are. They're, they're, they're gross. And I just, she was just a little off. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not one to run to the vet and go, my dog's acting sick. Because she's acting pretty normal. But you notice these little things, right? And I know she's got quality food in her stomach. But I sprinkled some Canine Pro on her food. And I've been doing that for the last week. First of all, it's. She gobbles it up faster than she normally does because it, it's like livery flavored. And uh, how do you know that? Well, my hands get it on there, and when I light a cigar, I can taste it. Um, but I'll tell you what, that Canine Pro, it, 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 it basically, I think she had a little something going on in her stomach. You can find all that stuff at Canine Athlete. Hydrate and recover, Canine Pro, new dog. If your dog's getting old, give it a little new dog. You're not going to make a new dog out of it, but he's going to feel better, I guarantee you. It, as much as I guarantee, if you have not looked at the commercials at the Upland Institute, take a little time and decide, okay, I got, I got an okay dog. I want a little better. I got a new dog coming next year. I want to start from a solid foundation. Go to the Upland Institute and check out our training videos. There is, this is not a conglomeration of YouTube videos. Okay, this was a huge project, 15 months long in the making, 40 dogs, everything you could need to get your dog from the day you bring it home to the day you drop your first bird with it. And if you want to take it all the way to the end, you can steady it up to wing shot and fall, backing, honoring, relocating. We have it covered with the Upland Institute. You know, all I need is a tarp company, just a big tarp company to put a big blanket over this whole thing and just wrap it up like a donut. Anyway, thanks for listening. This is with me and Brent Pike. I went over to go pick up my rain jacket and my pants and I brought the recorder impromptu, little infomercial in the beginning, but we start talking about where we've been hunting, what the dogs are doing, what the dogs are doing wrong and uh, there's some good hunting stories in there and a lot of laughs and uh, there might be some language that you might not want the kids to listen to. In fact, I think at one point Brent said, is that okay? You're going to have to edit that? I said, I can't, you know, I don't edit. So um, love you guys, love you girls, and I love you voters more. Sounds like we, all, like we always do, Brent. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Ron Bain with the Honey Dog Wait. Podcast. I thought we could make those. I thought we could make those beers sound like the letter P. (laughs) Popcast. It's the popcast. Anyway, I'm over here at uh, Brent's shop over here in Muskegon and checking out some new stuff. Checking out the new raincoat. Yeah, I like the new raincoat. Of course, I can't walk out of here with one because it's still being sewn. But no, it's not. Okay. Mine are they're being delivered tomorrow. Okay, yours, yours will be here tomorrow. We right, and I can't take the one I tried out. <laughs> no, right? No, that's yeah, an extra large. You probably take. need a large, I think. Yeah, that was a little big. Yeah. Actually, it was a little big on my arms yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. I, nobody wants anything too big, even if it's light. You, you still want it to fit. Well, and I think that's you know kind of one of the things that we've been able to do is is people were used to having to buy these pants that were you know too big so they could get some mobility out of them. You know, so yeah. when you're climbing over logs and things like that, the you know the the pants had to be bigger so you could you know get some you, right. you were getting hung up halfway across there. But right. the problem is when they get wet, you know they stick to you, and then you've got you know fifty. Then you feel like on. the mummy, <laughs> exactly. Like the mummy walking like right. this, right? You know, just to dive into everything, we, I want to yak about because you and I didn't get the hunt this year. I want to catch up with all that, but. Year ain't over. <laughs> the year's not over. You've got Oklahoma coming I up. I do. I yep. have yet to be there. All right. Um, when you're doing the pants, you know, I I saw these. I'm, hey, did you even notice? I, was I did notice I was that. Wearing, you were, yes. I had to get a haircut today, and I wore my pants, my uh, my pipe pants. When they put this, what do they call that little stitching? Articula- oh, the articulation for the knees, yeah. You know, I saw that on some pants a few years back. Mm-hmm. And I was like, eh, what's that doing? And I'm like, well, those are also my pretty favorite comfortable pants. Yeah. And it must do so. It, it doesn't, on paper, it doesn't look like, how would that make it? It just keeps a little bit of that fabric off the back of your knee. Like, I'm sitting here in my in my blue jeans right now, 
Yeah, you, you look know, like you got bike shorts you, on. <laughs> well, they, they, you know, they, they pinch back behind the, your, your leg, yeah. and you know, and you're walking and stuff like that. It just, you know, and, it, and it's, it's got that curvature of your knee. I mean, you're never standing straight up. You're always especially me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about your knees being straight, but you don't have I that. Why I, like I, I need to get like a reverse articulation so they're bow legged for you too. That's what we need to work on the bow legged pike pants. There's only like three bow legged There's, there's got to be there. a good market for that. Oh, I'm telling you, you're missing the. I'm missing the market. You're missing the market yep. now. Um, but when when you go to make them, did you? And I don't know if we ever talked about it. Did you go through like? all the different pants out there that you've liked over the years and or did you just I know you worked in like the fabric and the outdoor industry a little bit but when you're making your first pair like did you did you make them and go like eh <laughs> actually well I had a couple of ladies down in Detroit that worked in the fashion industry for years that helped me come up with the first oh, pair oh really so I told them I said hey you know I want articulated knees and a gusseted and crotch just because I knew that those are two things that, that make a pair of pants fit right. So yeah. they developed the first pair and they had articulated knees and a gusseted crotch and we've just kind of you know, evolved it a little bit from there. We haven't changed a whole lot. I mean, we've, right. you know, we used to have two, four darts in a knee. We changed it to two darts mm-hmm. on, a, on a knee so it, and it functions the same way. But it, you know, anytime you have a seams or stitching it's just it's just a point of wear another, another place yes it's so, so we, you can do it with two yeah i mean if you could do a zero it'd be awesome but you know yeah. to get that articulation you know you can do it is, is glue it and there isn't glue good enough yet to do that stuff. right so and probably look well in, in if people don't know what articulation is picture the guy that's wearing a pair of wranglers now i've seen a few people hunting blue jeans which i probably did a few times but you put a pair of wranglers on to go out to the bar you're not going to be walking over any deadfalls in the UP, I can tell you. No, that. no, they're straight you're, leg is you're all You're going to have to stand back <laughs> and do a leg swing like you're going over a bull. Yes. Right? Yes. And I, I think there are still some hunting pants out that are kind of like that. Oh, well, most of them are, I think. I mean, you know, there's. You know, I don't think any of the the traditional stuff. I'm not going to mention the name of the right. company, but the the real traditional stuff everybody knows about with the uh, you know the wax canvas and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I don't think they have any articulation in any of their stuff. No, they're like uh, the Tin Man. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you know, I think the other the other big company with the O, I think they've got a couple of some articulation in them, but a lot of them don't. You know, and it's I mean, it's you know, you look at there's you know there's two darts in each knee. That's four darts on a pair of pants. It's people don't do it because it's expensive to do. You know, you're, you're, you have to cut that and then you have to sew that. And, you know, in our pants, especially the double layered pants, you know, you're, you're sewing now twice, twice, yeah. you know, so it's, it's not cheap to do, but it gives you a much more functional object to, at the end. Yeah. And then raincoat, you've been, that's been a long time coming, oh, right? Yeah. We, 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 we developed one two years ago and we liked it, but the fabric, it just, it was just felt too heavy. I'm like, this fabric's just. We, so we had the design down, mm-hmm. but the fabric was just, it, it was very briar resistant, but it just, it just felt heavy on and it, and it yeah. didn't breathe as good as we were hoping for. So we last year got some new fabric and used it all last year. And I'm like, wow, this stuff is unbelievable. I mean, just, you know, the most breathable fabric I've ever used for lightweight water repellent for what? Yeah. Because most yeah. water resistant stuff, I mean, Gore-Tex, you, you name it, there's 15 different iterations of that stuff out yeah. there. It all works the same way, you know. That it, there's microscopic holes in the fabric, right. or excuse me, in, in a in a in a laminate on top of the. So you've got the fabric, a laminate, yeah. Um, whether it's actually laminated or sometimes it's just a coating that they spray on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those that coating on there has microscopic holes in it, and those microscopic holes are. I'm gonna screw this up, but let's say they're they're ten thousand times smaller than a drop of water, right. but ten thousand times bigger than water vapor. Yeah. So just to kind of get so that yeah. way it allows it to breathe. Now that being said, when you're producing X amount of water vapor, it just it can't keep up with it. You know, right. so you get sweaty on the inside and you get right. clammy. And and uh, this jacket from all the field testing we've done, I have not. And you know, Tyler, we use uh, field tests up, oh, up in Alaska, and, and we all know Tyler could sweat pretty good. <laughs> and and he uh, he's like, I could not believe you could sweat like they're going to quit making uh, it. And so could I. And I, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm a pretty good sweater myself. And he's like, I could not believe how freaking comfortable this jacket was you know what walking up mountains and right. you know 50 degrees yeah, and, and that doesn't mean you're in shape and you're going to not sweat for sure it it's, just it, means that that fabric is 
in your favor. Absolutely. It's, to have I mean, more comfortable. Yes. Yeah. The harder you work, the more perspiration you get. I mean, your chances of you know getting wet on the inside obviously increase. But I will say, you know, if you're out there doing a moderate bird hunt, you know, and you're you're not running any you know sprints or anything like that yeah. out there, you know, and it's not. 65, 70 degrees out, you're probably going to be pretty comfortable in that jacket in most yeah. situations. I mean, it, it really sheds the moisture well, keeps the moisture, you know, it, the moisture your body's producing, it, it lets out of there really well. And we think we, we hit the, the fit spot on. I think that's the right. thing that people are going to really like. There's you know? nothing that's magic. Nope. I mean, we, we talked when I got here. I said, when, if, if, when I'm up in Alaska fishing in the boat, I wear Helly Hansen rubber. Yep. Flat out rubber. Yep. Zero breathability. But you know what? You're sitting in a boat. You're not walking. And, and it's you know? durable as all get and, out. And that stuff will keep you dry. Yes. But if you have to so much as pull the anchor up, <laughs> you could you might as well go into a yes. sauna wearing that shit. Even their first I remember I bought a Heli Hansen jacket back in the mid nineties. It was really cool looking and they have this really good waterproof breathable material on yeah. there. And it thing did not breathe at all. I mean, I just alpine skiing, downhill skiing, and that thing. I like was dying. It was so hot, you know. I, I like, forgot they made that kind of. Yeah, they make, they make a lot of really nice stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, I was wearing I was wearing these pants. Um, these are Tongas, and I was wearing the uh, the Tongas pullover mm-hmm. the UP. Yep. And you could never, like I said, we're, we're going to say this five more times. Every day is different. It's cooler in the morning. It didn't rain yet. It rained at noon. It kept it cooler. But I was the most comfortable for the first day of hunting up in the UP because I just had the right combination. It was not so much moisture coming out of the sky. It was coming off the trees. Uh Uh-huh. Which that kind of, it's like that's the perfect blend of like, I'm still dry. Yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling that. If I'm wet on the inside, it's going down the back of my neck. Right. So I need a turtleneck, Brent. <laughs> Not in our works. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right, fine. You don't want to turtle that. But you know, you're right, though. I mean, that's but it, the, that was a comfortable. And I, I remember when I first met you. Not first met you. I've known you a long time. But when you started talking about um, clothing, I was like, wow, you're, you're going to make hunting clothing? Why? And you're like, I want to be comfortable. I'm like. I was like, my my clothes have never made a difference in day of hunting. I'm like, yeah, I guess they did. It, yeah, I guess it, they you did. don't know what you don't know. I just, you just got to remember those stories. Like, oh, remember that? It's like it's like good waiters versus bad waiters. Yeah. You know. Yep. You get if the day was good in hunting, you'd forget about how shitty you felt in the pants if, or the shirt. Right, and that's I mean. You know, I mean, you worked for what forty years on your own, and yeah. you know, you had weekends off, and that's when you went hunting. Yeah, yeah. And it. if it was fifty-five degrees and raining out, what were you doing? You were hunting, right? You know, it and didn't you didn't have, you know, let's go out on a Wednesday because it looks like it's going to be fifty-five and sunny out, right. and, and right. you know, perfect. We didn't have that option, so that's you know, I was always, you know, I've, I've been a weekend warrior. So I'm still pretty much a weekend well, warrior. Most people man. are. Yeah, it's. I mean, you got to pay the bills. Yeah, and um, you know. But I wanted to be comfortable when I was out there, and I and right. I knew that there was better stuff out there. That's that's what the bottom line was. Is you know, just because nobody else has put any money into the the industry in the last hundred years doesn't mean that it wasn't available. Right. You right. know, they just chose to continue to to ride their profits on their their crappy old stuff that you know it was functional and you know, but it, you know, you said it wasn't comfortable. I mean, I've had numerous guys, you know, especially some of the older guys, say, you know what, this stuff is keeping me out hunting a lot longer than I was five years ago. Yeah. You know, because I'm I'm just I'm comfortable. It's lighter weight. It doesn't get wet. You know, if it does get wet, it dries out super fast. It does. And, like and you could you could take a pair of pants off. Eventually, something gets wet, but it's not wet like it doesn't. It's not certain. Well, we know it's not cotton, but it's still like I could take those pants off and hang them up on a wall for a while. Put them back on later, and it's like they're bone dry. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. just the good fabric that we they use, just don't they just don't absorb, absorb they don't absorb moisture. Don't absorb I mean, absorb. can they get wet? Yeah, of course they can. You know, walk it, through a puddle. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they're gonna get wet, but it just sheds it they're off. Wet when they're in a washing machine. Yeah, they they just don't they don't absorb, like cotton. I mean, why do we use cotton towels when we get out of the shower? Because it absorbs it's all that the moisture. Best. Yeah, it is the best. And you are not making t- shower towels out of pipe gear. No, no, no. Because you'd just be moving the water around. Yeah, absolutely, and around. absolutely. Um, so I was excited, and I love teasing you because, and people should know this when you have sponsors. Brett's one that I've 
you know, known for a long time. And if, if I call him and he can grab the phone, he grabs the phone. Same thing with uh, some of my, like, Gunner Kennels. Um, I can even get a phone call answered from Purina. So, you know, if yeah. the guy's not on the phone. But I love having the relationship with the uh, with my sponsors that's that's not, I don't want to say trustworthy, that I, we can tease each other. Yeah. Or when they do call back, it's like, hey, what took you so long to call me back? <laughs> you know, I like that. And today I called up Brent and I said, I said, you know, you could have told me you were making some green hunting pants. <laughs> and you're like, I'm like, yeah, I guess I could have. Yeah, I'm, I'm not but, the best. Like, at- when, when you first started making this, I, I'm so used to gray now. Uh-huh. I feel like it's one of my hunting colors. It is, yeah. But I said a long time ago, was it three or four years now? Um, is this going on the fourth? This, coming is, up? this is our fourth. I mean, so 2019, we, we launched. That's the year we did the, the, the flush TV show and stuff like okay. that. Okay, yeah. You know, we, we had a, a limp, we had the Kiowa pant, the Kiowa shirt that wasn't even shipping until like November. Right, that's You right. know, so I really count 2020 as kind of our, our first year right. actually. Yeah. Selling stuff, you know, yeah. we, had, we had the vest that year, and and I asked for green. Then you look like a, no, it's gray. <laughs> and I'm I'm on my computer this morning, and I'm like, oh, and I, you know, when I see your emails, I'm not clicking on them because it's like, well, I know I'm not gonna read Brent's email, and I see the title. You asked for it. I'm like, I've been asking. Yeah, for it for you t- have it. Yeah, you have, and we we delivered. You know, for some reason, I think hunting pants should be green. Well. You know, and I don't, it's not that I disagree with you or anybody else in that matter. It's just, you know, when you're launching a company and launching a brand, we wanted to be differentiated. Well, and yeah. And, and you know, we probably lost some people that, you know, said, Just said, I don't want great pants. I don't want great pants. You know, and I, I, I can tell you we lost people because I know we've had people email us and say, hey, you know, if you had these in gray or, or green or khaki, I'd buy them. But I'm not buying gray. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, oh. You know, I mean, but, you know, we're kind of the point now where people, you know, our, our brand is growing, you know, yeah. and we've got, we've got the best customers in the world. I mean, we've clearly had some challenges the last few years with Everybody supply does. chain yeah. issues and stuff like that. And I tell you what, I mean, you know, delayed orders, which I hate. I mean, it's, you know, the, the bane of my existence when we have orders get delayed on people because yeah. I know it's like, this is a short window and, and like a lot of other people, they want to get out there and use stuff. And when it doesn't get to their place on time... It can screw things up. Yeah, and people are and understanding. This isn't Twenty years ago, where people were used to waiting. It, That's true. People are used to quick. Yes, so I mean I Amazon. Spoil, yeah, they spoil people, spoil but they've people. also. I think a lot of people have, have come to the understanding that you know, hey, we're a small company. Yeah. You know, we're 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 trying to you know. We, we do a lot of great things for the, for the outdoors, and we just became a. This, this will be breaking news for on the Honey Dog podcast. Okay. It hasn't been announced by RGS yet because I asked them to hold off a little bit, but uh, we're a corporate sponsor for RGS now. Really? Yep. Yep. So that uh, starts, I think, November 1st. So I guess what is November 3rd now? Or yeah, something. we didn't break, yeah. the, we didn't yeah, break we, any rules. No, no, no. So that's, so that's, that's pretty cool. And, um, you know, so people have been understanding that, you know, it, it, we're tough, some tough times right now. Right. We're, we're getting through that, and we've, you know, we've got a. Our manufacturing partners expanding, so we've got you know room to grow, and we can build a lot more cool new stuff. And you yeah. know, you saw Joe back there this afternoon working on a new jacket that we've sewing got away. sewing away. It's a new prototype jacket, and you know, it's fabric we've already tested, so it's it's easy to to you know to actually get you, it into production. You know, the, you trust the fabric. Trust now the just fabric. Just we just turn it the design. Else. It looks right and fits right. You know, that's yeah. that's the, the the key to that stuff. And. And uh, so we're super excited about, uh, you know, all the cool new stuff. But uh, going back to the customer, I mean, just, you know, and, and, you know, it's your fan base. I mean, your fan base was our original customers. That's, you yeah. know, we, 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 our first marketing dollars were spent with the Hunting Dog Podcast. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I can't thank your audience enough for supporting us, trusting us. And, hey, you know, we're not the cheapest stuff out there by any means, right? You know, and, and for people to, to put down the shekels on our stuff. Right. And, you you know, sight unseen. I mean, we don't have. We've got our small little store here in, in the city. They can't go try them on in Alabama. Go, yeah, or, exactly. People or Colorado. Uh, yeah, people buy it, and you know they've they've loved it, and we, right. you know, and we do our best to give them good customer service. If somebody breaks a zipper, or you know, does. You know, I've had people you know rip pants on barbed wire, and you know, hey, send them back, and you know, we'll, we'll sew, them up. sew them up for you. Yeah. If, you know, if you don't have anybody close by, you know, it's not. You know, we won't charge you an arm and a leg to do it. And you know, right. we just we try to take. We, we, we don't take our customers for granted. Yeah. You know, we, we, you know, we really appreciate all of our customers that we've gotten and, and, uh, hopefully, you know, through their loyalty, we'll be able to continue to bring them killer new stuff. That's that good. Really Cause like. I, I'm waiting for them green pants. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in the, 
I'm going to be behind the building waiting for the supply truck. <laughs> yes, to come. yes. Because I'll, you know, but you know, what my wife will say, she goes, "Why are you wearing your hunting pants to dinner?" Because when I wear my pike pants to dinner, she doesn't say that because they look like gray yeah, pants. Yeah, because that, and that was part of the reason why I bought them is because you know, or, or built the, the gray is because a gray looks technical, right? It does. It, yeah. It's just kind of got that techie look to it, but it was also kind of like the thing that you know, a lot of guys, you know, if you're hunting in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, it's kind of a big town. You know, they might not want to look like they're a bird hunter when they come out to, when they go out to dinner. Some yeah. guys just don't want that look at all. You know, right. I, mean, I had a guy call earlier today. And he's like, you know, he's like, I hate to sound vain. He's like, but he's like, what looks best <laughs> when, when I buy this shirt with these pants and stuff right. like that? And I'm like, oh, this this is a, a nice combination, and you know, all of our stuff kind of goes together. You know, I mean, the green is 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 out of what we've normally done. Our, I mean, our our pants outsell our shirts, and everything. I mean. Everybody loves our pants. I mean, there's nobody that buys our pants that doesn't say, wow, these are the Comf- best pants I've comfy. ever used. I mean, yeah. They're comfortable. They're durable. And they're you know, I'm surprised. Maybe it's because shirts just aren't as big a deal when you're hunting. Maybe. I don't know. Because I told you in the beginning, like, you knocked that out of the park with the shirts. Yeah. The way they're cut, the way they're fit. Yeah. I, 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 I just took it off because it got too warm today. I was wearing it all day today. Yeah. I look like a damn walking pie can today. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> but no, I, I think... You know, with, with with the shirt thing, it's like you know, I mean, it's seventy degrees here in Michigan today. Right. You wear a damn t-shirt on. Right. There, yeah. You know, but you, you always gotta have pants, and, and you wear through pants fast as you do shirts. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, if you're out there hunting thirty days a, a year and then dog training yeah. thirty days a year, I mean, you're gonna burn through some pants. I mean, there's right. just you know, not on a yearly basis, but you know, I mean, and, and I like to have two or three pairs of pants. They're gonna take the brunt. The pants are taking the brunt of the work. Yes. Like a dog's front legs carry sixty percent of his. His power, why do they get hurt in the front? Because they got 60% of the weight in the front. The, yep. pants, the pants are our front legs Absolutely. of the dog. Absolutely. Yep. You know? yep. They just say. Speaking of front legs of the dog, how's your new dog? She's doing well. I mean, it's it's been a tough couple of years to, to really get new dogs into into birds on a consistent yeah. basis. Um, she's got a lot of point in her. She's, uh, we were out in Montana. We hunted huns, sharp tails, sage grouse, blue grouse, and rough grouse. And we struggled. I mean, it was we were in the south. What'd you struggle the most with? Um, sharp tails. Really? Yeah. And and we went to some spots. A, a buddy of mine was out there a couple years ago. And he's like, "These are the spots. This should be good." And there were birds in all the spots, but just I mean, wasn't we, easy. And we talk, we, we ran into this old ranch. You're gonna love this story. <laughs> this guy comes walking out, and I swear to God, it was Sam Elliott's twin brother. Oh yeah, so he had a like mustache, a big giant handlebar or broom, broom mustache. Yes, and, you know, big giant buckle on him, and uh, we went over and thanked him for for being in the what is the block management, block or, management, or, or yeah, whatever, yeah, the block management program out yeah. there, and I said, hey, you know, you got any tips for us on on birds around here? I said, you know, this is a beautiful cover for Huns, and we flushed two, and he's like, we ain't got no birds around here. I'm like, why is that? Is he? We had a storm come through here last spring in April that we had 40 to 50 mile an hour winds for four days straight in wind chills of negative 50 to 100 at times. He's like, oh but it was God. consistently below zero just without wind chill. And we got about three feet of snow. And he's like, and it killed every goddamn bird around here. <laughs> and he's like, and all the damn deer. And I'm like, well, we've seen a ton of antelope. He's like, yeah, that's because they fucking leave. <laughs> Pardon my French. <laughs> Which I forgot, you know, antelope are kind of migratory. Yeah, they'll move. Yeah, they'll move and around. they, you know, and uh, this was in, like, in April. Yeah. Because um, I know the guys, like, in northern Montana did really well this year. That's what you I know, heard. Yeah, really North well. North Dakota did. In North Dakota did really well, too. I was there, and I, all I had to do was walk. Mm-hmm. Like, commit to, let's say, an 8 to 10 mile day, and yep. you will be in birds. Yeah, we walked 12 to 14 miles a day. And in three days, we flushed... Less than twenty sharp tails, yeah. and, and these are known spots. These are this yeah, is right. So the, it just shows that it's it, so fickle with yes. weather and storms. And yep. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then we went. Over, my son's over in Bozeman at Montana State, mm-hmm. and uh, he's like, "Hey, uh, I got some spots. We we killed some blue grouse at last week. You guys want to go?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, we do. I've never shot a blue grouse. Let's go do this." Yeah. Holy good lord! We started at sixty five hundred feet, mm-hmm. which is a lot higher than Michigan by right. what six thousand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're at six hundred feet. Yeah, oh, yeah, six hundred. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. so it's six thousand feet more vertical than what we were at. Right. And uh, he'd been out there for about six weeks or so, and he was complaining to me when he first went out. Oh my god, these mountains are killing me! And he's, you know, he's a he's a young kid. Yeah, he's an all state wrestler. I mean, the kid's a good athlete and yeah. in good shape and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I can't be that bad. Holy god! I mean, this first spot we went to. I mean, it was. Up, 
<laughs> you know, and we, we climbed a thousand vertical feet mm-hmm. and we flushed like three rough grouse. He killed one by, by a young pointer, Penny pointed one. That was yeah. kind of cool. And it flew over the top of her head so I couldn't shoot it. Um, and it was still pretty thick. I mean, we were, it's, it's almost thick. October. It was just thick yeah. out there, yeah. you know. And, uh, but no, no, uh, no blue grouse, unfortunately. But, uh, was it because you didn't get up to the top or you think they were? He moved in there like a week before. Yeah. You know, my one experience of doing that was with Steve mm-hmm. on, on that episode years ago. And, you know, we, we, we did it. We also shot some rough grouse on the way up the mountain. And we did the same thing. We started about 6,500 feet. The one day we went to 9,000. And I mean, I'm like, nobody should have to work this hard for uh, a damn feather. Yeah. But at least we, when we got there, the birds were there. Yeah. Which takes all that complaining, like that, like my I can't lift my legs anymore. It was it was pretty brutal. And then you know the worst part was actually walking down the mountain. Oh yeah, because it was dark. Oh jeez. And we're in grizzly country. Oh yeah. And yeah my we're... kids at the car like twenty minutes before we are. I'm like, hey, shithead, wait for. <laughs> I don't know where the hell I'm going. I got a mark on the GPS, but I don't know where the the, the trail is oh and God. stuff like that, you know. And your son ditched you. He did. He did. I freaking had to yell at him like three times, like, "Hey, you want your tuition paid? You know, you better slow hey, down you there, homie." Slow down because you're gonna be asking for something here pretty quick. Exactly. Quite. Exactly. Uh, so we hunted around Bozeman for a few days, and we, we moved a couple coveys of shark. Uh, excuse me, of huns a day. Yeah. And uh, we were driving over east of Bozeman. We were gonna go try to find some blue grouse, and it started raining. I'm, like, I'm not driving up the mountain in the rain. I, I'm not a, an experienced mountain driver, and no. you know the roads were getting kind of snotty. And and because uh, if they're down in the cattle country, you know to stay off those roads for sure, for yeah. sure. So we were actually down kind of in the sage sage flats area, and and I uh, was talking to Justin on the phone from mm-hmm. the Upland Institute. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. And uh, he. Uh, He's like, you know, he's like, the area you're in actually has some sage grouse. He's like, they're not on the map as being in that area. He's like, but I know they're there. I've, I've guided in that area before, and I, I've seen them there before. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, all right. I said, well, how do you know what sage is better than others? He's like, well, he's like, he's like you get out and start walking, you know, and you'll see sage grouse turds. He's like, they look like turkey turds, but they're green. Little, little hooky. Yeah. He's like, yeah. they're, you know, I'm like, no, oh, okay. So we're driving down this snotty road, and, and, uh, my buddy's like, you know, we should probably let the dogs out. They haven't been out since this morning. Let's let's let them out. So I was like, oh, I was parking the road here. I mean, he's like, yeah, well, I mean, there's nobody out there. Nobody coming by. Yeah. And he's like, why don't you just pull off into the grass so that way the dogs and we don't get all muddy and we get back in the truck. So we pull off of the grass and sure enough, there's crap everywhere. Sage grouse crap. Sage grouse crap. <laughs> I'm like, I'll be damned. <laughs> Let's walk. You know, it was raining. It was it was miserable. Get I mean, the guns. And luckily, I had my Tongass jacket there, so I was I was semi not miserable. But it was you know it was fifty five degrees and raining, just kind of one of those not raining hard, but just enough to make things kind of miserable. It'd make you wish it wasn't raining. Absolutely. Yeah. So we get out and walk around, and you know, half an hour there's turd everywhere, and we're out of turds. Like, let's go back to the turds. <laughs> So literally, we were following the shit. <laughs> You're just following the breadcrumb trails yes. of, of, of Sage Brown. Yes, yeah. and we, we kind of get back towards the truck, and, and he goes over one uh, knob, and I go around another knob, and I see three sage grouse fly into this this little thing, mm-hmm. and I heard him yelling at me like a few minutes before that. I'm like, I'm going back to the truck. I'm I'm kind of done with this, yeah. you know. And and I see those three sage grouse, and I'm like, so I'm like. I'm Chuck over to him because I want to get him over there because I mean neither one of us has shot a sage grouse before. Right. So I run over the top of this mountain. He's like, "Get your F and A down here." <laughs> he's like, "I got a dog on point." He's, oh. like, he's like, "I'm waiting for you." <laughs> so <laughs> so we go down there and and uh, boom, up goes like I don't know four or five, and yeah. um, he killed one, I killed one, and we collected our birds and kept walking a little bit further. Dog goes on point again. Boom, two more birds go up. We each shot a bird. We, we limited out Sweet. on sage grouse. Yeah, we, we moved some sharp tails back there and some some uh, huns back there. And I'm like, yeah. it was a sweet walk, you know. It was, so it was a Friday, and I, I called my son, and uh, he's like, hey, are there any more left? Can I go down and shoot one? I'm like, you're an hour and a half away. I'm like, fine, we'll go to the bar and have some lunch and have yeah. a beer, and you can come back, and we'll, we'll bring we'll you. We'll show up. you where we were. We'll show you where we were, and we went in there, and we weren't in there for 50, same damn spot. Dog goes on point, Sage Ross goes up, bam, he killed it. <laughs> He's like, all right, that was pretty cool. 
<laughs> so we all killed our first sage grouse that day. That was obviously the highlight of the trip is, is killing those things. I didn't, you yeah. know. And, you know, people bitch about how terrible they are eating. We just ate them last weekend. They were delicious. There was nothing wrong with the sage yeah. grouse. Yeah. I would say they're chewy. I would say, if I did them again, I would either run them through a cuber or I'd get a meat mallet out and pound them out. We, we soaked them in buttermilk for eh, three or four hours. When we cooked them, we just... We, you know, we did different things with the legs and we did the gizzard and the liver and that was all strong. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's safe, you know, it's yeah. all, the whole thing only eats safe. Yeah. I mean, grasshoppers in the summer, but they live on a, on a, on a spice basically. Yeah. Where, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. But when we cooked the breast, I was thinking it's a pretty thick breast. It really thick. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's almost kind of like Canada goose thick. Yeah, you know? Yes. You know that's what I, mean? I would say. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I was remember I was telling him, I said let's let's butterfly that breast. So we went down the length of the breast and we bent it open mm-hmm. and hit it on the grill both sides. So we we basically just did you know, plain old fashioned steak seasoning yeah. and some oil and just basically seared seared. Oh, it was I had zero complaint. Yeah, I would eat them again. I, would, I was worried we shot them like oh god they were they smelled awful when we were cleaning. Yes. I, I couldn't believe like, 100% the first things, one I cleaned I'm like not the what? guts the, the, the bird itself the just bird smelled. smelled like like a like a sour Thompson's water seal or something yeah weird, something weird some weird thing yes it was it was awful it, it stuff it wasn't like dead smell yeah it just and it wasn't like a sweet pungent it was some creepy it was nasty oily yeah now, a friend of mine oh you know Dave Dean um he said, "Ah, it tastes like turpentine," and I'm like, "Maybe that's the smell—a little turpentine." Yeah. Which I don't know why they would smell like that. Yeah, I don't know either. If, if I if I hunt them again, which I'm, I assume I will, I think I take that breast and I would I would just fillet it in half. Yeah. And either do we we made poppers out of them because we right. were we were so concerned that they were going to be terrible. Right. So like so well, you didn't do any real justice to we, we we did a few actually that way we we, did, we started out with poppers and we we had a, we had some left over so we we did and I'm like. They're, there's nothing wrong with this one no, whatsoever. No, I mean, I would say it's it's a little stronger than it's, it's stronger than sharp tail, but I mean, I would put it in you know. And we shot, we had two boomers and and uh, and I think three juveniles. three juveniles. Yeah. The one that my son saw. And then the juveniles are tender. The, the juveniles were very good. Yeah, yeah. but I, the, the one boomer I could, I'm like, this one's a little bit chewy. He's, the old, he's an old bird. Yeah. He's yeah. a tough old bird. That's why they had that saying. He's yeah. A tough old bird. Tough old bird. Yeah. It's not yeah. just a guy. But I was surprised camera. at how easy they were to kill. Yeah, they don't. I they mean, don't. I killed one at I bet you sixty yards. And it just, it just was it dead when you got it. That one was not. That one right. actually. You but know, it went down. It went down. Yeah, yeah, it was a big boomer, and my my dog. It was running around, and my dog pretty much defeathered the entire thing trying to track it, <laughs> which is too bad because it was a beautiful bird. Oh, oh, you lost know. a lot of the tail. You lost all the tail. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, yeah. I so. you know I didn't save that. I should have. I actually I did. I saved the tail. I I got two boomers, and I. I saved the tail, but it went into some cooler, then it went into a refrigerator, then it went into a freezer, and then someday the, the yeah. freezer died. In the garage. And I always wanted to have that, yeah. that, that tail of that. that yeah, I might just, cool just do that. Yeah, they're really cool birds. I mean, they're just, you know, and it's a funny story. Like a year ago, my buddy from Oklahoma was up, we were up to be around to go hunting, and he said, uh, we were, he stayed the night at our house, and we were talking about doing a sage grouse hunt, and my wife said, well, you know, why do you want to hunt those things? He's like, because they're endangered. <laughs> you, might you might not be able to. I'm like, well, they're not really endangered yet. I mean, they're they're threatened, I think, you know. And Well, and yeah, if they were truly endangered, there would be a hunt. Hunting. Yes. Um, and I think, hunt, I think I've listened to, you know, you know me, I'm a podcast yeah. junkie. I don't know, unless we're talking about back in the old, old days... You know, biologists, state agencies, they know that hunter mortality doesn't have much to govern. Right. It doesn't really govern the brood the next year. Correct. I mean, it could in some small area. Well, there's so sure. much private property out in those areas that yeah, they're, they're, they're never getting harassed. And the birds then, just, just like our grouse, they disperse, they find new spots. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't have a desire to go back to shoot another one. It's kind of weird. Like if if I could go, if I was there, I'd say, "Oh, let's go save dress hunting." But I could not drive there now just to go do that. Just to I go would do that. I would agree. That and would be one of the reasons is, and I know this is this flies in the face. Everybody says, "Oh, I love sharp tails and I love huns and and I love pheasants." 
I love them sneaky, hard, they're like weight tails with wings. Mm-hmm. You can smack a pheasant with a load of sixes and he's still flying. Yeah. You touch a, a sharp tail or a sage grouse or a lot of other grouse, you hit them with a BB or two, even in the wing, and they go down like, <laughs> yeah. They, it, I don't mean that doesn't make it fun to hunt them, but it's almost like you almost feel like, God, ah, you didn't have any. I shot an elk once, okay? This, I've never told this story ever on a podcast in my life. Gary Bishop was running this pro- big project in Virginia, and he wanted to take us up to a high fence place in Pennsylvania. I didn't want to go, but he pretty much said, you're going. You're one of my main contractors, and you're going. Now, bear in mind, this was a high fence elk, all right? I shot it, and I expected it to at least lurch or act weird or something, and it just, it looked like somebody at the bar at about midnight and started going left to right and swaying and swaying. And boom. And later on, I told somebody who elk hunts, he goes, yeah, when you hit them good, they just, they they do just kind of, I'm feeling a little queasy. You hit a white tail? I don't care where you hit a white tail. The fuck was... So there's something about that bird that's hard to kill. Yeah. And a rough grouse. Not because they can take the babies as much, but they're so damn hard to yeah, get. Yeah, they're hard to get. They're hard yeah. to get. So those two birds are my favorite. You know what is a surprisingly tough bird is a bobwhite quail. I haven't. I've got so little data. <sighs> we, on the ones we shoot out in Oklahoma are the toughest little sobs. I mean, like you know, you hit them down. You know, you hit them down. And you'll go there, and there'll be a pile of feathers there, and they'll just run off into a little rat. If there's any bit of life in those things, they are just running like a pheasant. Running like a pheasant. Really? They, they, yeah. They're. I've seen Huns do that more. Yeah, they're incredibly a tough. A few times. Yeah, they're tough little. That's but something. I would have never guessed it with a quail. Yeah, I'll tell you, ninety nine percent of my quail I've ever shot came from a right a, 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 a lot. Yeah, you know, and yeah. Um, but I didn't know that. Yeah, they're they're really tough, and the blue quail are even tougher yet. They really, are, oh, man, they're really tough. Yeah, like just mini pheasants. It, mini, that's exactly what I'd call. Isn't it weird how like one bird you hit it with a baby and they're like uncle? Yeah, <laughs> they're like like beating up your little brother. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, and then the other one you could just paste it. You you're. You're sure it's gonna be yeah. there, and just I mean I've, I've puffballed them before, and you walk up there and they're just where's the bird at? <laughs> that would drive me crazy. Uh, it, it does. I mean, you lose. It drives me crazy. I, I've come to accept, and you probably do with quail, maybe. Yeah. I've come to accept a certain amount of loss with pheasant hunting. Yeah. I mean, you think you hit them, you saw them go down. Yeah. But after enough experience. You know that if that was just maybe like a little shot that stunned them maybe mm-hmm. a little bit, maybe you could just clipped them in the head and was enough to take a wing, disable a wing, that bird is going to give every bit of energy into running that it did to flying. Yep. Right? And you think of all the game birds out there, uh, I, th- I don't want to say the farthest because, you know, grouse travel farther, like sage grouse, mm-hmm. to get for water and, and sharp tails. But kind of in an unmolested state, you flush a pheasant and it's it, it's going to go 600 yards. Yeah. You flush a grouse, it's only going to go... 100, maybe 200 maybe, yards. Maybe, right. You know, but, you know, quail, I, I just kind of, I just always assume the quail are kind of like pansies. But if I go to Oklahoma with you... They're tougher than snot. I'm really? Just, I'm telling you, you'd be surprised how tough they are. I mean, I shoot sixes for bobwhite quail. So. Oh, see, I would have guessed for yeah. sure just smaller shot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean... I gotta get a beer. Hold tight. Well, now we're back. And Brent, I want to tell you about my new sponsor. Um, actually, this company sponsored me for the last 30 years. They just didn't know it. <laughs> so, uh, here's to you, Miller Lite. Miller Lite. <laughs> Boy, if they could just pay me. Uh, they should pay you know, me. If they could just give me... Well, the problem is their revenue would go down. They, they probably couldn't sell it to their, to their shareholders. They, if, if, if they paid you... And even if they paid me a beer... What, what if they just paid me a They'd beer? lose money. They'd lose money. Yeah. I mean, their stock probably would have I like don't go. understand. The, the other day, and I've been trying to like, I, I told you I had to go down a size in pants, which I'm right at the edge and I'm not going to go back up. I'm going to stay down. I've been doing my yoga and doing some working out and shit. And, uh, but the other day, we got a nine pack of the 16 ounce bottles. 
I got them at 3.30 in the afternoon. I went up to get gas or something from the hardware store. Had a couple before dinner. Had dinner. And I drank the other seven after dinner. I'd be up peeing all night long if I no, drink here. No, I stay up long enough to at least get, you know, one more little uh, one more little squirt in. But, I mean, the stuff is like manna from heaven. <laughs> it, it really does taste great. Less the nectar fill, of the gods. Less filling. <laughs> if they could just sponsor my podcast. Yeah, I think we gotta we gotta pursue that angle for you. As I long as we're not the title sponsor. No, you're you're gonna stick out with that. I'd like to stick with the title sponsorship, <laughs> <Okay>. yes. <laughs> um We got all over hunting stories, but um the new dog, your dog your new dog is not that new now. No, she's all, she's two now. Two now. Yeah, but I mean so yeah, I guess we've kind of digressed into the, that whole you know yeah. lack of birds and stuff like that. Right. And, and uh, so I mean, I, I think she's going to be okay, but it just I have not been able to consistently get her into birds. I mean, the last trip we had out to Oklahoma, the last day she had a great day. I mean, that she, was last year. Last year, yep. She yeah. she found and pointed a bunch of birds, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know she she still is figuring out how to handle them. Yeah. You know, so we're we're going to the UP this weekend, and hopefully we can find some some grouse yeah, for her. And, yeah. and I just. This year's been a weird year. So we went to, to Manitoba and filmed the show. Oh, that's the right. Wild Ride. Yeah. Um, that was just on on Monday, actually. We, oh, we, you should have called me. I, I, well, I didn't even know it was on until after. <laughs> I'll send you the link so you good, can watch good. it. It's, it's a, I mean, we were mostly hunting Sandhill Cranes, which you've done before. And uh, oh, Manitoba. Oh, that's right. I'm yeah. thinking of when you went to Iceland or New Zealand. Oh, that was Newfoundland. That was that, last year. Yeah, that, that was, was uh, that was uh, like two weeks ago from right. last year. Right. We hunted, hunted ptarmigan right. up there. But you went to... We went to Manitoba this year. Okay. And hunted sandhill cranes and then sharp tails in the afternoon. And, right. And uh, they're just... There was a few sharp tails around, but it, it wasn't great. And it was, you know, the afternoon... I mean, it was early September. It was... 75 degrees and You're just not dry and yeah. you know it was it was just it was tough. You just need like a a consistent season of finding birds for the dog. Yes. And making all those things click. Yes. It's just tough. And sometimes. I just I just have not been out. I mean I've, I've hunted, you know, so we hunted 4 days up there, 6 days in Montana and then be around for 4 days. So I mean I haven't really hunted a ton this fall. I mean I've got you know we're going back, we're going to the UP this weekend and we're going to Montana for Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm going to Arizona in January. Oh, you're going to go visit your son? Yep. Instead of him coming home? Yeah. Smart, yep. smart move. <laughs> I, like, I like my moves and my style. <laughs> and everything will still be open, right? It will, yeah. I mean, sage grouse are closed, but that's, you right, know. Right, right. Um, and hopefully they won't have too much. I'd like I'd like to get up and try to shoot a blue grouse. It might be too late in the year to be able to do that. Um, depending Just on how to get the mountains. Right, yeah. right. But, I mean, there's, you know, huns and pheasants and sharp tails and, yeah. You know, we'll we'll make do, and I'd like to get into Yellowstone that time of year. Hopefully, if there's not too much snow and see and, some uh, of the sights, see some of the sights, and we, you know, we were there a couple of years ago. It was in April, and you know, half the roads are all you know snowed in and all yeah. that other stuff. And but you're gonna bring the dogs just in case. Bring the dogs, yep, yep. Bring all the dogs, and no, well, you still don't have your old old one. Yeah, that dog's still. Is she alive. still alive? Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. She's not uh, only is she not cooperative, she won't even cooperate and die. Yeah, I know. How old is she? 13 and a half. That's what I was going to say. Which is going to be 13. For a pointer is... It's, it's, that's old age. It is. And it, it, I hunted her last year. I mean, she can hear a whistle. <laughs> it, when she wants to. Well, <laughs> yeah. As you know, the dog's never been much of a listener. Yeah. You know? Before she didn't listen, now she doesn't listen and can't hear. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's she's always just had a mind of her own. You know? oh. That dog just, you know, she's not finding her. She's going to go find it someplace. I mean, right. as big of a pain in the rear as she is... I'd take 10 more of her because that dog has been... Because you know that you're going to get some birds over. For it's sure. It's just not going to be picture perfect like a Robert Rourke book or No, something. I mean, she's got a terrible tail on her, but if she is impeccable... I mean, I can I, do, I can honestly say I've never seen that dog rip a bird. Not one time has she ever wow. ripped a bird. I mean, she, you know, of course she bumped birds. I mean, you know... She, yeah, you, and you never know what happens. It, right. A bird could move toward the dog. Yeah. And all that. But, but even, I mean... Two but you've years, had... I've had dogs, too, and I'm like, yeah, they're only somewhat trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so two years ago, so she was 11 and a half... We had just a terrible day in Oklahoma. We'd hunt, it was my son and my buddy Ryan and I, we hunted all day long. We'd walk 10, 12 miles that day. Mm-hmm. And we're like, let's just take one more walk before sunset. And that dog went out in an hour and a half and found four coveys. Wow. And, you know, same thing, though. Just, you just let that dog go and you just follow her. Right. I mean, whatever plan you had, just throw it out the window and just <laughs> just follow her. And, then, and honestly, that's what I did when she was young. I, I mean, I was pretty... Well, and I think sometimes... 
there's certainly genetic search in a dog, you know, like distance. Like you're not going to get a 50 yard dog to all of a sudden become a 300 yard right. dog. Right. And vice versa. It right. would be a, it would be a, it would, you always say you can always pull them in. You can't push them out. A dog that wants to be out to try to pull it in. You're just arguing with it. For them. sure. So you got to accept. Yeah. Range. And some of that stuff. Yes. And hers was... In the girls, would she would, you know... Field trainer would have liked her. Probably, yeah. She just didn't have enough style and speed. I mean, she, you know, she would... She, you know, she, when I first got her, so I had a short hair that died probably six months after I got her. So And then I had this older short hair that was just not worth a damn. I mean, just, mm-hmm. you know, he was just a terrible bird dog. Really nice dog, but he just was not a good bird dog. So right. this dog... So I got her, what is it, 20, so I got her in 2009, we had pretty good grouse numbers, and she got a lot of hunting, Yeah. and a lot of hunting, and then, you know, and when she started proving herself, man, I'm going to hunt this dog a lot, so I mean, that dog has got some <laughs> miles out of me. <laughs> Two knee replacements. She She's had, had the, the rear, the, the crucian ligaments? Oh yeah, by both knees. Oh my God. Like three summers ago, we were in the UP, and she had her stomach flip on her, so I had to run her to emergency <laughs> bed. Yeah, oh yeah, that dog is like literally She's like the dog. six million dollar Oh yeah, man. she's like the six million dollar dog. There's not a lot of dogs that put that kind of money in, to be real honest with you. Right. But I'm like, well, she's kind of earned her keep. I mean, that dog I've, I've shot. Rough grouse, um, sharp tails, chickens, gambles quail, blue quail, huns, Bob White quail. Bob White quail, woodcock, pheasants. I mean, I've, I've literally have shot everything. Everything, gone. I, everything I've done, I've 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 shot over her. It, other than sage grouse, and then tar, I didn't bring her ptarmigan hunting last year. Right. I brought my other dogs that to go ptarmigan hunting. How was that for the dogs? Was that? Uh, I I think we talked about it once. Yeah, I mean, it was like, good. I mean, it's. I mean, how like if you could say you could get to let's say you could get to ptarmigan country easy, which you can't. Yeah. Right. There's a little spot of Colorado, but not counting that, you got to go up to the North Hemisphere. Right. So other than logistics, would you, if I could say, Brent, would you rather live in good grouse numbers in North Dakota or Michigan, or would you rather live in Alaska with good ptarmigan numbers oh, for the dog? Grouse and sharp tails all day. For, yeah. So what's it like with your dogs on ptarmigan? I mean, because I don't have a... <sighs> You know, they're, they're, they're not real wily birds. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're not going to let a dog catch them. They're, they're kind of like spruce grouse. Oh, okay. You know, speaking of which, so th- this guide that we, I'm not going to mention the guide service we use. <laughs> okay. The, the guide service is great, but they, this is up in yeah, Canada. they had, a, they had another guide that was, you know, helping them out mm-hmm. and, uh, we're driving in I and mean, it was a, it was a mile or it was a, an hour drive on a, on the worst two track you could possibly imagine <sighs> to get back to a boat launch, take a boat across the lake to go to the... Jeez. Yeah. So so the guide service was great, but they had one guy there that was going to take us out grouse hunting, you know, ptarmigan hunting. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're driving in, and, and there's a, a spruce grouse in the road, and the guy's like, that's a, you want to go shoot a rough grouse? And I'm like, well, that's a spruce grouse. <laughs> and the guy proceeded to argue with me for like 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm like, listen, I literally have shot hundreds and hundreds of rough grouse in my life. <laughs> that's not a rough that's grouse. That's not a rough grouse. That's a spruce. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And oh, like, Jesus. So, so I probably should have argued with him, but I'm like, I, when I know I'm right on something, I'm not going to give up. On something like that, yeah. you can't. And, uh, you can't. So I think he like decided, you know, we went out on our own a few times, but the, a couple times he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to just walk these guys into the dirt. That's and he, Oh, that was his punishment? That was his punishment to me for, oh, oh, no shit. yeah. And he brought us to some terrible walking spots. Just, they have this stuff called tuck, which is kind of like that ground hemlock crap we saw over in high yeah. Island, but yeah. worse. Because well, it'd be growing on the ground, so the ground, you know, you'd be walking on rocks and stuff like that, and if you don't, st- you, you, you're, you're constantly walking with your head down because it's, it's. You just, have to look where you're going. You have to look where you're going. It's, it's right. miserable walking. I mean, it's some of the most beautiful country you could ever imagine. You're constantly walking with your head you're down. Full of look at. But, it, well, yeah, when you stop, so you're not, you know, but you'd step into these these holes if you weren't being careful. And break your freaking neck. I mean, I had one hellacious fall out there. You know, oh, I mean, it was so good. I actually fell through my gun, was able to roll and stand right back up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was was it caught on video? I don't think it was. That one was not. That one was not. But um, but no. So this this uh, this associate guy that they had to, to take us out because mm-hmm. we were out there filming the TV show for Nick's Wild Ride. Right. And uh, you know he was out moose hunting for a few days. We were trying to get the tarmigan kind of dialed in. 
And, uh, and this guy just, I think he thought, he's like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to walk these guys into the dirt and, you know, make them, make them pay for their, and, 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 the, and, I, and, I, and I, and I felt that way. And then this year we met with one of the, the guys that owned the lodge and, and super nice guy. And, and he's the, the head owner. He's a great guy. And, and, uh, he, I, I said something about his, his buddy, the, this surrogate guy. And he's like. I'm like, I still have a video of that bird. I'll show you the video. I mean, it, it's clearly a spruce grouse. And he sent the, the, the guy the video. He's like, so do you still think that was a rough grouse? And the guy's like, yeah, it was a rough grouse. He's like, what, what's this bird in this video? And he's like, well, that's a spruce grouse. He's like, well, that's the video of the bird that, <laughs> that you got in the argument with. And he responds back. He's like, yeah, so what? I still was able to walk his dick into the dirt for those three days. I'm like, what a jeez. I'm like, we paid all this money to come. I mean, One of these days, I'm going to do an episode about bad guided trips. Oh man, this guy. Because was... I've got two or three in the in the queue that I would just got to get the right amount of beard, the right amount of yeah. guys that have had. Yeah. Because that it, it's always sketchy. Yeah. But to go back, because for once I'm actually focusing. What was it like for the dogs handling the tarpon? So the dogs handled the tarpon fine. I mean, it was it's just they weren't that challenged. They just were that challenged. I mean, you know, they just had to get to where they were. Yeah, they're they're kind of like shooting sharp tails. You know, oh. I mean, the, the yeah, walking which is true. Yeah, the, the walking is what it takes. Absolutely. Okay. I, I mean, it's in, but it's just. I mean, you'd be walking like let's, let's say you're. We're obviously on a podcast here, so I'm going to try to make this a, a visual for people to think in their heads. Right. So, so say you're walking, and there's a pool that's ten feet above you. Mm -hmm. And you're walking next to a pool that's full of water, but it's rock. It's, biz I mean, it's, it's, that's just, weird. it's weird. So there's, there's Roman baths. Yeah. It's like these <laughs> Roman, it's like, and it's, so the, the whole, they, they, they've, they've done studies on that, the island and the rocks in that island are like 80% filled with water. Really? Yeah. So there's, there's just constant running water everywhere on that, on that wow. island. It's, it's bizarre. Um, so the birds be more high and dry? Um, Yes and no. I mean, they were, you know, the, the rock tarm again, we we found were up on, on rocks. rocks. I mean, right. literally, I, so I brought my, my puppy up there on that run, and boy, yeah. she loved chasing those. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she's got to tell. You know, I know when she bumps a bird, because it's... <laughs> she's barking as she's chasing Sounds like them. a German shore, yes, to be I honest know, with I you. I know, I <laughs> She's got all that in her, but she, she likes chasing those things when they when they flush. And uh, she had a hell of a good time chasing those things. But my, my setter, uh, Libby, who is, I don't know, I guess she was probably six or seven at the time. She she did great on those birds. I mean, yeah. just, you know, had some really nice points on them. And, and I mean, they, they and they're, they're challenging for dogs. What they'll do is they'll walk out right in front of the dog. Oh, I mean, like... like like a dumb I know, you, I know you can. I know you can see me. Yeah, we're just gonna start walking away. Yeah, and they'll. Which you don't see with a rough grouse correct. or a pheasant. Right, they're like spruce grouse and and uh, like, sharpie sometimes and hunt sometimes. You can see. I haven't. I haven't hunted either either of those enough to to really make a make that judgment on them. But right. I've, I've certainly seen it. You know, pen raised chuckers and yeah, be, field try. That that yeah. would be what my. Oh yeah, they're like. I don't know what your problem is, but I'm leaving. Yeah. And uh, so that, I mean that was that was the challenging part for the dog, but I mean and they're fun. I mean they were really. I mean the guy said, "Oh, these things aren't worth a damn to eat." They were delicious. I another mean, another dark meat. Bird, another dark meat I mean, bird, but and they're up there eating these. What do they call them? Uh, I think they call them grouse berries. Mm -hmm. These red berry. I mean, I mean they're like early. I mean they were every bit as good as, as sharp tails. Those, those guides, you know, when I, co I I cooked up a big meal for the guys one night with the with the sharp or the ptarmigan we shot. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Man, this stuff is amazing. I'm gonna go shoot some more of these things. I'm like, God, they were. They're really good. I don't know if there's a. I, I, I guess there's probably a couple of ducks somewhere and some mergansers. Yeah, which I don't even call spoonies. Them duck. <laughs> but I mean, an upland game bird. When somebody says they don't like one, I'm like, w w did mom cut the crust off your sandwiches yeah. too? How do you not like? A, a, beef is dark. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want a bird that's dark? Well, because people well, overcook them. They, well, they don't understand and that you got to cook them. Maybe the first rare. time is it's a Same with like venison. You know, I mean, if you cook venison to shoe leather, and it's terrible too. Yeah, but so is beef. In my yeah, opinion. absolutely. Pork, my God. Yeah. Pork chop overdone. Oh. <laughs> you know, like the, the Three Stooges when they would go, and, yeah. the, and the feathers would come out of their mouth. Yes. You know? Yes. Like, the whole thing is like, I don't think there's a bad piece of, well... I, I don't know big game. I'm not a big game guy. And I know there's, I've heard stories of, you know, elk or pronghorn that, you know, gets a little sour and I can see that. But game birds, I've never had, I've never had a bad game bird. Yeah, I agree. I mean, woodcock are delicious. Again, it's just, you, you got to cook I, them right. You know, on the, 
the Pike Gear Grouse giveaway. Mm-hmm. We, I just did that hunt up there. Two, two points to make on that was Dennis is our guide, who was a great guy and we had a lot of fun with, but he took out one of his old females and he, nicks, he nicknamed her Self. And I was like, Self? She goes, yeah, she's kind of into herself. <laughs> No dog like that. <laughs> that's that's a maybe your dog. Like she's like, he's like, yeah. As long as you can get to her, she'll find the birds. Yeah. But isn't that where it's like some dogs are like, it, it could be what we, it could be the first couple bird contacts they found on a big search, and we got to them and it all worked out. So in their little brain, it's like, I need to be wherever I need to yeah. be. Yeah. Then other dogs like my Tagus is like, I need to be by my owner. But then when he finds a bird, his behavior is great. But I'm like, I wish you'd be a little more self. Well, I think that the really good dogs, like my old dog Morgan, you know, if, if there's birds around, they're close by, she'll work, you know, within 100 yards. Right. But when bird numbers start to get thin, like that day we were in Garden Island, we there were finding. Oh, no, there was a lot of walking. There was a lot of walking. And right. so, when, you know, she just started expanding her search range. And that's what they do is they just start, yeah. you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, trying to find. They'll, you know, that's how those good dogs dig birds out for you, yeah. I think. You yeah, know. she she dug out birds for yeah. us. I mean, we had to go in a different direction than we were planning. Yep. But if you broke through there, there was a bird there. Yep. You know? But oh, going back to the the, the giveaway hunt, um, I cooked up. So we had, I think we ended up, and I, I said this on the podcast two weeks ago or a week ago. Um, I, I give Evan a, a ton of credit. This guy drove from Florida. Never shot a f- single feathered critter in his life. Practiced with sporting clays with his gun broke open. Gun broke open, right? And he closed it. He had to close it and bring it up. Wow. And when he went in on a bird, he wasn't walking like Elmer Fudd, uh-huh. but he was poor arm in it, stock with. Yeah. Can you, do you know anybody who ever shot? Three woodcock and two grouse on her first day of Absolutely Michigan. Absolutely not. That's, that's Ever. unbelievable. Ever. Yeah. And he probably didn't, did he realize what a great day that was? He does now that I've told him yeah. about it, but um, it, I expected him fully to maybe come out there with a bird or two. But anyway, going back to that hunt, we're talking about, you know, the meat, the way it tastes. A lot of people don't like woodcock. Woodcock to me should be like sashimi. It barely just, just barely touch yeah. it on the grill. So I made them, you know, they want to know, like, should we take these birds home? I said, you can, but, you know, you got all the way to Florida. I said, let me just cook them up for you. So uh, Amanda went and got rice, and we were just going to have some grouse and rice and some woodcock and, a, you know, a little lemon pepper and butter, yeah. right? Just simple, simple. And uh, it, it was kind of refreshing for here's two young people. You're thinking they're going to like the grouse more than the woodcock, right? For sure. And I will tell you, I probably did the grouse a smidgey too much, but not too much. It was still juicy. I still like things rare, rare. Yeah. And I think I did the woodcock just a smidgen over. And both of them said, like, why does everybody like the grouse? This woodcock is unbelievable. And going back to the ptarmigan dark meat, yeah. the sharp tail dark meat, the sage grouse yeah. dark meat, D- dove, morning dove. Yeah, it's damn near purple. You know, I, I you know, you, you don't hear people complain about birds as much as you did even ten years ago. I think people have, have learned that. Well, people used to say, "Well, I like pheasants." Yeah, <laughs> big deal. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I, I would take sharp tail over pheasant. Oh my god! Any yes. day of the week, you know. I would. T- I would I, t- I'd take rough grouse over woodcock too. Um, well, but you can never make the same dish. For sure. I mean, you know? you're right. That's it's, it's really not fair. It's like saying, right. well, I like chicken better than steak. It's like shrimp better than a deep fried walleye. Yeah, it's right. Two different it's, yeah, seafood. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, woodcock cooked properly is really, really good. Oh, if my God. Cooked improperly. There's just not enough of it. it that's the problem. It's, it's like that little just, it's like little finger food. Like, oh, we're done. You know what my old saying is? The only thing worse than getting scummed is shooting one woodcock. Because <laughs> then you waste more in propane getting the stove shut down. You can't. You can't even feed. No, it's not even an appetizer for one person. Right. It's I mean, just like oh, you really got. You got to shoot like six woodcock. To, you got to have some birds. Yeah. You got to definitely yeah. have some birds. 
Um, what do you got coming up the rest of the year, Brent? Uh, so I'm going to back, I'm going to the UP this weekend. Okay. Um, got a trip to Montana to go see my son. Right. Thanks. Um, yeah, we're gonna go to Oklahoma and then out to Arizona, and then he's flying back from Arizona. Now you're going to Arizona for the the three, three quail. Yes. Yeah. Well, Did we're you? gonna we're gonna focus on Merns just because none of us have shot Merns. We've all shot. Um, scales, scalies, and uh, I don't know if a bunch of the guys I don't think have shot gambles yet. So we, I'm sure we'll spend a day chasing some some desert quail as well too. Yeah. Those gambles quail are they're little pricks too. <laughs> <laughs> I've yet to do it. I would only fly. You're flying. Was, no, we're driving. You're gonna drive. Well, because we're driving out to Oklahoma and gonna spend a couple days hunting there. Oh, well, then you're halfway. And then we're, and then we're driving to Arizona. Yeah, yeah. And actually, my son's flying from Arizona from Phoenix back to Bozeman to go to school. Oh. Um, it was seventy five bucks to fly from Phoenix to Bozeman. It was like three hundred seventy five bucks from Grand Rapids. So I can hurt almost pay to justify the trip for Jesus that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so and I'm sure I'll. I, I haven't even been hunting around here at all yet. I mean, I oh, me neither. Barely. Hunting it's around it's here. been crazy. I mean, my you know between my kid going off to college, doing a couple of out of state trips. My daughter, you know, her her school team went to the state equestrian championship, so I had to go. That was a life, weekend. Life gets in the way. My dipshit cousin got married last weekend. You <laughs> yeah, know, during hunting season. Yeah, it's like, dude, you're. And of course, last weekend was you have the most go. gorgeous weekend. That would have been the weekend. Yeah, it was the weekend. I'm like, yeah. son of a gun. I know, know I haven't done it any justice, but I've had some really good trips, and I got. I'm gonna duck hunt uh, the 10th and 11th on the Mississippi River. Oh, nice. And uh, I haven't done that in probably 15, no, 20 years. Last time I did that, I had Haskell, that black oh, yeah. bastard wire there. <laughs> and uh, chewed through his rope twice and got, all of a sudden we saw him out doing a duck search on the Mississippi <laughs> River. He's like, what is that? That's, oh, my dog chewed, chewed through his leash again. <laughs> but uh, doing that, and then I go out to my hosted hunt in South Dakota. But the beauty is, to go from here to the Mississippi is about a seven-hour drive for me. That's not bad. Yeah, seven, under eight, right? Well, my hosted hunt doesn't start till the 17th, but I would literally have to drive back from the Mississippi River back to Twin Lake, Michigan, and back again two days later. Yeah. So I'm getting to go, I'm going to go out, you know, South Dakota, got a motel, and I'm just going to go... Driving around, checking WMAs, a couple spots I used to ask permission on. What I love about South Dakota is the unimproved roads. If you see birds, you take a dog down there. I'll take that little cocker. If I see some birds going into the ditch, that little cocker's going to get out there and get a little bird. So that is the best thing about South Dakota. I got four, almost like my North Dakota trip. My whole crew left and I didn't go on to Wyoming, so I had five days to myself. I got four days. Before my actual hunt starts in South Dakota. Nice. Whether I hunt a lot or a little or it, it'll probably be my, like psychologically my best hunting year ever. Just Perfect. because getting me time. Yeah. That's, and I have not had it. I mean, I love my, I mean, I got a great group of buddies that I go hunting. Oh, me too. And it's, it, I wouldn't go hunting without them. I wouldn't either. But I, either. But I, I would like to get a couple could, days. Yeah. Just could you me. imagine being, let's say down in Oklahoma. And you were going to go on to Arizona. Mm-hmm. And then they all went home and you still had the same place you run. You're like going, oh, yeah, I think I'll hunt. No, I might not hunt until about 9 o'clock. Yeah. Then maybe 11. Yeah. And you just have that. Because in life, we never get that time to ourselves. I no. Mean, I'm not bitching, but wife, family, kids, yeah. jobs. And it was almost like I was dropped off. And I'm getting it twice in one year. That's awesome. Um, How well deserved. Me. And I can only hope that Tagus appreciates it, and so does V. Now, how old's Tagus? He'll be two in June. Okay, so he, and this he's, is... He's coming along. Because he was a little slow developing, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. And, and is that normal for Vigilas? I don't think... No, I don't I don't think so. I think it's just his personality. Okay. Um, his his two sisters had bird shot over him last winter. Okay. Um, I purposely held him back a little bit. Kind of like my neighbor held back their daughter because they wanted her to be the oldest kid in kindergarten so they'd be smarter. <laughs> but I actually kind of followed some foundation rules about wait wait to be released. And I'm like, if this dog's got it genetically, he'll do it. But I think I... You'll never have no way to know. Yeah. Because you can't reverse time. Yeah. I think I should have got him out more because I'm always questioning his search. 
Sometimes it's like wonderful. I took him out just the other day across the street from my house on Jerry Bazell's property. You know, the Bazell property. I know Bazell's, yeah. Yeah. And the dog walked on a trail in front of me. Like, and I kept going, okay. And he goes out and he scampers back. And then he finally got into a little bird set. And then he was very animated. But I've never had a dog that comes out of the truck go like, hey, let me know when there's birds here. Yeah. It's almost like he has to be, he has to smell something. And then when he smells it, it's like, oh, we're hunting. Yeah. I've never had it before. Huh. But then when he points, I'm telling you what, the dog holds a point. I, used, I saw the video you posted. That was cool. And that was getting ready for his puppy test. Yeah. That dog will... I've never had a puppy that I could produce the birds in front of him. He did it in North Dakota on a cubby of hunts. Uh-huh. Came over a hill. I looked down and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm looking down at this hill. and I mean, this is a cow pasture. Uh-huh. I'm like, certainly I would see a bird. But the wind's coming up the hill. They could be mm-hmm. 50 yards away. Right. And I'm walking in front of him. He won't budge. And these Covey of Huns was only 20 yards in front of him. They got up. And, of course, as soon as they got up, he ran, you know, he, he, he ran after him. And I dropped one and missed one. And uh, But I'm just amazed at his. And I almost wonder, like, is it because I held him back on search? And he, when Pointing Instinct came in, it overrode that puppy thing or am I just being fooled by randomness <laughs> yeah like all of us are Brent right like like running a business like running a company like doing everything there's a lot of random there's things there's a lot of random shit I, I have found the harder I work the luckier I get <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to it's a good way to wrap it up yeah agreed well, it was nice talking to you again Ron I appreciate you coming out here and uh, appreciate all the support all the Honey Dog Podcast patrons and uh, just general listeners have, have given us over the years and uh, we look forward to bringing you guys lots of cool new stuff here in the near future. And, uh, and I'll be wearing it. Awesome. Much appreciated, bud. And I'll be whining about it. After you get me green, I'll be whining about brown. Yeah, well, <laughs> that'll be in the future. Okay. It's coming. See ya. Take care.